Hi, thanks for joining me for another Affinity Designer tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over how to put a sky into this uh, picture right, right after this. So before we get started, um, please look in the description and you'll be able to download this picture and the other picture. Okay, so um, Affinity Designer has a bunch of different features and they also have different personas up here. So I'm just, this is going to be in the pixel persona and I'm going to be showing you how you can uh, use pixel persona. Um, so this is going to be the sky I'm going to put into this uh, photo. I'm actually going to put this field into the sky one because this is going to be easy, easier to select. So I'm going to um, go uh, dive right into the pixel persona. Okay, so um, now that we're in the pixel persona, um, you can either um, click on the selection brush tool and select the whole field that way. But I'm going to go with the rectangle selection tool because it's basically a rectangular field. So, I'm going to select it. And um, I know it's probably pretty hard to see where I'm selected, but I'm um, selected all around the edges and right here. So, after you get this selected, I'm uh, hit Command C to copy it. And we're not going to be doing any feathering or refining. So, come here and click on the sky picture and then you can drop this field right into the sky with by hitting command V. Okay, so now the sky is a bit like there's a tiny bit of sky and it doesn't look really very real. So I'm gonna zoom out here. And we're gonna make an artboard. So make an artboard, click on this and make it straight with this. and drag to um, make it any size you want and then if you wanted to um, make it custom you can click up here and um, select it that way so then we'll come up with uh, your artboard you can rename it if you want but I'm just gonna leave it like that save time and I'm going to pull up this background or pull down this a bit and you need to unlock this by clicking on the lock thing then you can move it different places so what I did here was I just drug I drug it up like a little bit so it's a little bit over the green so you can sort of it's like uh, the horizon a little without getting into the brownness of the picture so it's just like silhouettes of the things back there and so I think it looks pretty fine but so that's basically how I I would do it if you zoom up here you sort of see this really distinct cutoff this is all blurry and then this is like super distinct so what we're gonna do here is we're going to go right into the pixel persona again okay so then we're going to um, get our uh, blurring tool and that's going to be this uh, raindrop type thing here and so what I'm going to do here is turn up the hardness to 100% opacity and turn up make it a little bit bigger I just want it to be big. I know this is all blurry. So, I'm, so do that. You just select on the layer you want to blur, and I'm gonna come here and blur it up a bit. Okay, so now this is pretty blurred. I'm just going to go ahead and blur this picture too because I was thinking uh, if this is blurred, then uh, back there needs to be blurred too. So I'm going to go ahead and blur all this real quick.
Okay, so I've blurred it all right now. And it looks like a pretty nice picture. I'm just going to crop it down a little bit. Um, in photography, you want to have the one-third rule. And right now, it's split right in the middle, and that looks sort of bad. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my draw persona and fix this up a bit. I'm going to crop this down to about here which will make it a sort of a squarish object um, take this from both sides and try to make it look less square here. now I'm going to make the artboard smaller so when I export it it's not going to be a bunch of extra room around the picture there you go okay so then um, you can go ahead and export it so now I'm going to go ahead and export it to export it you come up here to file and then click on export save it as a JPEG and I'll just uh, save it into my desktop, I guess. Replace the old one. And that'll be good. I hope this tutorial has uh, helped you with whatever you're doing, and or at least just was informational. And, um, if it was, uh, please give me a like, and if you need more Affinity Designer tutorials, uh, just subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and also give me some uh, comments on what you guys want from, from me uh, in, in tutorials, so uh, thanks for watching.